Good morning, church. Good morning once again. Wakisema good morning. Mnasema good morning na nyinyi. Okay. Good morning, church. Good morning once again. Hello and welcome to an extensive 15 minutes analysis and presentation of JSS TV News. First, the news headlines. President Samia Suluhu Hassan condemns the ongoing objections and killings across the country, saying such acts act good, a good image of Tanzania. Reverend Wilbur Mastai gives an overview of the massive construction projects going on in Kimara Park. The, e the ELCT, ECD Education Coordinator, Ms. Agnes Lemma, gives a highlight of the Illumi Day for ECD schools and education centers. Russian President Vladimir Putin says his mission on Ukraine is not yet complete and it will be completed even if it takes 100 years. The ECD Secretary General, Honorable Goodluck Nkini, commends the good work done by ECD schools to prepare the youth for a life of service. Dear viewers, we want to inform you that we'll be broadcasting live from these grounds of Jerusalem Bezi Beach Primary School. Our reporters will report live as they hold short interviews with various leaders. President Samia Suluhu Hassan has condemned the ongoing objections and killings across the country, saying such acts tarnish the good image of Tanzania. Our reporter, Chris Michelle Maloda, has had an interview with the president. Dear viewers, it is a privilege for me to have gotten the opportunity to talk to the President of the United Republic of Tanzania, Her Excellency Dr. Samia Suluhu Hassan, matters on national interests, especially this time when there are lots of things going on in our country. Your Excellency, Madam President, recently there have been reported cases of abductions and killings in our country. As the President, I believe these things disturbs you and gives you no peace at all. What do you have to say about the same? As the President of the United Republic of Tanzania and the Commander-in-Chief of all armed forces, I honestly condemn the perpetrators and I'm sure that anyone who is involved in these abductions and killings is not only aiming at tarnishing the party's image, but also threatening the peace, unity, and tranquility. I therefore, I therefore affirm and expose my self-concerns on the deaths or loss of the precious lives of our fellow Tanzanians. It is for this reason that I call upon the people to participate with the police ongoing as we go under route in finding the solutions of these problems in solving these cases. Thank you, Your Excellency President Samia Sulu Hassan for the, pres for, the, for the promise and for your time. This was a live interview with the President from, the, from Chamwino here at Dodoma. I, Chris Michelle Maloda, JSS TV. Thank you, Chris Michel Maloda. Reverend Wilbur Mastai has given an overview of the massive construction projects going on at Kimara Parish. Our reporter, Lina Agre, has more details on the story. Thank you, Hannah Mambia from JSS Studio. Dear viewers, I am today fortunate to have with me the man of God all the way from Kimara Parish in Dar es Salaam. This parish is known for its powerful proclamation of the word of God and massive construction of various projects. Dear viewers, it happens day and night, 24-7. Praise the Lord, Pastor Masai. Amen. Reverend Mastai, I must say this. I am privileged and exceedingly humbled to meet you today. I recently visited Kimara Parish and saw the gigantic construction project. What is it? Um, well, first, um, for my church, I actually want something called perfection. 
in perfection, we cannot only see it through the people, but also the environment. So I decided to start these different projects of mine, the Jerusalem Pre and Primary School. It's not yet finished, as you can see, it's right there. Okay. But also, I think about the Jerusalem Secondary School, which is also an advancement from the old one. Um, yeah, indeed, you're really correct. And I didn't, I didn't only see the gigantic construction project, um, I also saw the hospital. Can you please tell us the philosophy behind the hospital? Ah, uh, yes, for the hospital first, I was thinking of making it a small polyclinic. Then something popped in my mind and I was like, no. I should make a major hospital. So if the money is there, then why shouldn't I just make a bigger one? For the people around, you can see the advertisements for the charity of the labor ward. That's part of the hospital. And I believe, um, in my life I know you're not only a pastor, but also director, right? Yes. Um, I believe that a person with a kind of occupation like you, you must have a strong vision and a mission. Can you please explain the vision and the mission you have for the schools? For my school, there's a slogan of mine that is called 3A. The first A is in academic excellence. The second A is in moral. And the third A is in spirituality. For my school, I want my students to come out at top for our school to become the best of the best. And for that, we need a foundation, a strong educational foundation for our students. Um, also, do you think your mission, vision is achieving or successful? Um, throughout this time, yes, I can see improvements. And where we're heading, I'm pretty sure it's going to be successful. What makes you say that? Well, throughout this time, we've been building and destroying and rebuilding again, destroying again. But then that is only for the excellence of our buildings. You need something that is excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Mastai, for taking your time. We called you, many studio called you, but you didn't go, but you respected us and came. Thank you so much, have a nice day. Dear viewers, um, we just had an interview with Master Mastai, and I am, in it will always be, Lena Agre, JSS TV. Bye bye. Thank you, Lena Agre. The Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that his mission on Ukraine is not yet complete, and even if it takes 100 years. Earlier today, our JSS TV news reporter, Albiel Albert, held an interview with President Putin in Moscow. Thank you, Hannah Mambia. Dear viewers, here with me now is the rare and exceptional chance to meet the Honorable Russian President, Mr. Vladimir Putin. Good morning, sir. Good morning. As we all know, there has been an ongoing crisis going on between you and Ukraine so far. Now, we all hear that you have very big plans for this. Can you explain to us the history of this thing or crisis or disaster that's been going on between you and this country? Uh, first of all, people think I am crazy to like start a war with Ukraine, but they are the ones who started it because Ukraine were planning to form an alliance with NATO and the US. We were apart, we were USSR, then they left us, then now they want to join NATO. You know, viewers try to imagine, you are left, then they want to join someone who is your enemy, which means the enemy will bring their armies to their camp, and uh, on our border, we'll be at risk of getting attacked by the US, by NATO, so our security, uh, won't be at its highest level. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for the brief remark and history about that. Um, what can you tell us about the plans for this, for this plan? What can, what can you tell us about the plans for you and this country? My plans are direct and are clear. Obviously, I, we have been in a war with Ukraine. I don't hate them, but they started the war. So yes, I hate them. So my plan is, I just want to destroy Ukraine or to punish them in such a way that they won't come back. Because every day I sleep, every day I wake up, 
I check my list of problems and number one is Ukraine. They still exist. This makes me really angry as Vladimir Putin. So as the president of Russia, I promise Russians and I promise the world, no one will get into my way of what I'm going to do with Ukraine. Your determination has been acknowledged. But there's one question that all the viewers are dying to know how they've been asking themselves. Are you really ready for the risks or the outcomes of this war between you and this country? Excuse me. You said, am I ready for the risk? This war has been going on for two years. So if you think I haven't been taking enough risk, then you don't know who I am. First of all, first of all, Yes, I am ready for the risk. And second of all, the whole world, it doesn't matter the US or United Nations, is going to know who I am after I'm done with Ukraine. The confidence is very endearing. Well, viewers, that is all from here. My name is Abel Abatum Kongwa, live from Moscow, JSSS TV News. Thank you, Abiel Albert, and all other correspondents. I'm Hannah Mambia. Till next time, bye bye. Okay, thank you. So now we have uh, Bible verses recitation. So who's doing that? You yourself or some other people? Call them. Call them on. Well, go on and so much tariff I have barry because I will get a time while you can actually delay up. Hallelujah. That is not enough for the Lord who made you alive today. Hallelujah. Amen. In heaven, we have angels who bow to the Lord and say, Jesus, you deserve the glory and respect. Hallelujah. Amen. My name is Lena Agrikisole, and I'm, I'm the assistant minister for religion and spirituality at Jerusalem Secondary School. I am today with my fellow friends to recite some Bible verses. I will start with Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, reads, Parents, Train up a child in the way he should go. When he gets old, he will never depart from it. Colossians chapter 3 verse 21 reads, Fathers, do not provoke a child lest they become discouraged. 3 John chapter 1 verse 3, it tells the children, God says, I have no greater joy than to hear my children are walking the truth. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 6 reads, Grandchildren are the head. Grandchildren are the crown of the age, and the glory of the children is the father. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 127, verse 3 reads, Children are the heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord once again. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 reads, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 12 reads, For the Lord reproves him whom he loves, as a father, the son in whom he delights. Psalms chapter 34 verse 11 reads, Come, O children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 reads, Therefore, be imitators of God as his beloved children. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 reads, Likewise, you who are younger, be the subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. For God opposes proud and gives grace to the humble. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 9 reads, Let a widow be in love if she's not less than 60 years of age, having been a wife of one husband. Amen. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29 reads, Do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute. Let the land fall into prostitution and become full of depravity. 
First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11 reads, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek the Lord and his presence continually. Acts chapter 16, verse 31 reads, As they say, believe in Lord Jesus. You will be saved, you and your household. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24 reads, Whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline them. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15 reads, A rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself is ashamed to his mother. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 13 to 14 reads, Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you strike him with a rod, he will not die. If you strike him, he will save his soul from shore. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11 reads, For the moment, discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 19 reads, You shall teach them to your children, talking of them when you are sitting in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. Pro Psalms chapter 78 verse 4 reads, We will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation of his glorious deeds and his might and the wonders he has done. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 reads, All scripture is breathed out by the Lord and are profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness. Second Timothy chapter 5 verse 1 reads, I am reminded of a sincere faith, a faith that first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you. John chapter 1 verse 12 reads, But to all who have accepted him and have accepted his name, he has given the right to be called children of God. Mark chapter 10, verse 13 to 16 reads, And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked him. When Jesus saw this, he was vindicated, and he said, Let the children come to me, for such of them belong in the kingdom of God. And truly, I say, whoever does not, the ki whoever does not accept the kingdom of God as a child like them will never enter it. And he took them into his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on their heads. Psalms chapter 23, verse 1 to 6 reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down on green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul and guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table in front of me, in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So, before I finish, I want to ask you a question. As Christians in our life, what do we need to be successful in life? Money. A child. A car. Yes, those are all good answers. But I'm here to tell you, as Christians, Jesus is all you need. Jesus is literally all we need. Because science says that we need food to survive. But Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Come to me and you will not be hungry again. Science says that we need water to survive. Jesus says that I am the living water. Come to me and you will never thirst again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Science says that we need air to breathe and survive. Jesus says I am the breath of life. Come to me and you will have everlasting life. Science says that we need light to survive. Jesus says I am the light of the world. Whoever walks with me will never walk in the darkness, but have everlasting life. So, my dear brethren, stop going back to the world thinking that you will be satisfied by the things of the world. For they are scarce and our needs are many. So, it's time to walk with Jesus. It's time to accept Jesus. It's time to start walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. Amen.
So in short, our Bible verses were about the responsibilities of a parent and child according to the theme of the day. First of all, the theme of the day is Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, which reads, Train up a child in the right way they should go. Even when they grow up, they will not depart from it. As parents, you are supposed to train up a child. Our pastor, Reverend Mastai, has been preaching about this every Sunday. He has been preaching about this week in, week out. He has been telling us that parents, we should teach a child in the right way. Don't just make sure that they go to church. Make sure how many Bible verses do they know. Do they even know how to pray? Do they take time to read the Bible? Do they take time to take your phone and watch seminars of pastors and preachers, prophets in their phone? Do they take time to be with God? Do they take time to meditate the word of God? Do they honor God? Do they respect God? You should take time to, to know that about your child. Amen. Amen. So as children, we are supposed to provide an environment for our parents to do that. We are supposed to respect our parents. We are supposed to love our parents. We are supposed to honor our parents. We are supposed to humble ourselves in front of our parents so as to be successful in life so that God can find a loving family and bless them. Amen. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You are great. So, those are uh, news, Bible verses, public speaking. Did you do both? Did you do Bible verses and public speaking? Or should, uh, okay, the public speaker is on his way. Give him a microphone. You are doing the public speaking? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Praise the Lord, church. Once again, praise the Lord, church. Before I begin my speech, I would first of all want to thank God for allowing us children who have not presented yesterday while we were invited to the Lim Day event. And also to thank Pastor Mastai for giving us another chance to show our talents and our things because we took a lot of time for the preparation. So can we all just clap hands for Pastor Mastai, please? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, now I shall begin my speech. You see, I'm here before you today to express my thoughts and feelings about the tragedy of Africa. First of all, you must be wondering what tragedy do we have for us, to, for me to be talking about. I want to let you know that this tragedy has not only been there, but has been underway for a very long time and has actually gone unnoticed or just ignored. This tragedy of ours happens to be our dependence on the, our former colonizers, Europe and America. You're probably wondering how. Imagine this, our past heroes, Nelson Mandela, Julius Nyerere, how would they think? What would they feel if they saw that their seamlessly endless struggle for freedom was all for nothing? You are probably wondering if what I'm saying is true. Yes, it is. This is how. First of all, have you noticed how ashamed of ourselves we are? Do you want to know how? This is because that we have been brought up in a colonialist mindset that forces us to take shame instead of feeling pride for our own African cultures and customs. For example, a person may prefer hamburgers to having rice and beans for dinner. Or a potatoes can be fried in Dar es Salaam, but they can still be called french fries in the end once they are served. It's even reaching a point where African names are becoming shameful. A person called Odugaba, which is an original, Latin, uh, an original Nigerian name, by the way, can be laughed at more than a guy called Stephen. Because a person called Stephen or John, they find it as a normal name instead of, some, instead of a name from African origin. Another thing is our universities and our educational institutions are being overlooked. Nairobi, Dar es Salaam, Johannesburg, these are big cities with very big universities, but for some reason we are being overshadowed by international colleges like Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and others. A young African who has finished secondary education can dream about going to fly abroad and study when there is so much to see and learn right where he is. Even hospitals nowadays are becoming discriminated because someone can fly to India to go to, a, to go to a very important surgery. Well, they were hardworking and skilled doctors right at Mwimbili. And you can find Mwimbili is even closer to their house than India is. So the last thing is Europe and America's, uh, America's contribution to our, Lord, to our daily lives. I'm saying this because they contribute a large share into our entertainment. 
It is because their films and media entertain us much more than our own African entertainment that we try to make based off of our own culture. Nowadays, people would just like to watch telenovelas like Heartless or The Stepmother, or for the younger generation, DC movies like Batman and Superman, instead of watching African-related films like Black Panther or The Famous Woman King or Mr. Bones, the very old movie that probably none of us know about yet. So, in, so all in all, our, our situation is very dire and very critical, in which can risk our sovereignty if we are not careful. We must learn to be true Africans and stay real to our culture. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. So that was public speaking. Beautiful.